In this lesson, we'll be looking at how the type of intermolecular forces that an organic compound has and the number and type of functional groups that's sort of linked to number one, how that influences the physical properties. So if I had to ask you to compare these two compounds over here and tell me which one had a higher boiling point and explain why, you would be able to tell me that their boiling points would differ and this one over here would have a higher boiling point than this one over here simply because they have different functional groups. So you can see here, I hope you notice that this is an aldehyde. The functional group is known as the formyl group. It's the carbon double bond oxygen and the hydrogen. And this over here is an alkane. It's carbon bond to carbon bond. Now, because of the differences in functional groups, because they come from different homologous series, they have different atoms in their chain, you can see here. And because of that, it makes one of these molecules non-polar, this one, and it makes the other polar. And because of that, they have different types of intermolecular forces, which means that they need different amounts of energy to overcome those intermolecular forces. And this results in different boiling points, melting points, and vapor pressures. So that's basically what we're going to go over now. How do you know what the intermolecular forces are in the different compounds? And what does it mean for the physical properties? First things first, these are the three intermolecular forces that we care about in grade 12. London forces, dipole-dipole forces, and hydrogen bonds. You'll often see these being referred to as van der Waal forces, van der Waal forces, okay? But we are mostly going to refer to it as London forces, then dipole-dipole forces, and then this one over here is called hydrogen bonding, hydrogen bonding. I know the word bonding is in the name. But please, this is not a bond. It is an intermolecular force. So I love this image that illustrates the difference between intermolecular forces and intramolecular forces or bonds. So each of these over here are water molecules. That's a water molecule, that's a water molecule, and that's a water molecule. We did this in grade 11. Now, within a water molecule, you get these bonds. These are called bonds or intramolecular forces. This word is cut off, but it says intramolecular covalent bonds, the things that I've highlighted in yellow. So that is within the molecule. Those are called bonding. However, each water molecule is attracted to another water molecule by this force over here. And this is what we call the intermolecular forces that exert that is exists exists between molecules intermolecular forces and this is called hydrogen bonding so can you see that an intermolecular force and in this case hydrogen bonding is not actually a bond a bond is within a molecule between atoms this is an intermolecular force i don't know why they call it hydrogen bonding but whatever it's an intermolecular force so those three that i showed you those are the only ones you need to know in grade 12 is that these three intermolecular forces differ in strength. So hydrogen bonds are the strongest type of intermolecular force. They are the strongest type of intermolecular force and London forces are the weakest type of intermolecular forces. Dipole, dipole, somewhere in the middle. So what we'll speak about in a second is how to take all the homologous series that we learned about, all the way from alkanes to esters, and we're going to group them into according to what intermolecular force they have. So for example, alkanes have only London forces. And then something like alcohols have hydrogen bonds and London forces. We'll do that in a second. Why would they have different intermolecular forces? As mentioned, they have different intermolecular forces because they have different functional groups. So here, this is just carbon-carbon. This contains a halogen. This contains a double bond oxygen. These different functional groups means that they are going to have different intermolecular forces. And as you can see from this table, if you have carbon-carbon bonds only, it's non-polar bonds, so you're going to have London forces. Carbon-hydrogen bonds, same thing. Non-polar bonds, you're going to have London forces. But as soon as you have a carbon bonded to a halogen, like carbon and chlorine, like in my previous example, that's a polar bond, so you're going to have dipole-dipole forces. Same thing with an oxygen and a carbon. Polar bond, so you're going to have dipole-dipole forces. As soon as you have an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen, that is the special type of dipole-dipole forces, hydrogen bonding, the strongest type. So what I've done for you is I've taken each homologous series 
So each group that you've learned about, and I've classified them according to what type of intermolecular forces they have. So the hydrocarbons, the ones that contain carbon, carbons, and then hydrogen. So basically, they only contain the following two bonds, either a carbon to a carbon or a carbon to a hydrogen. And yes, it can be a double bond. Yes, it can be a triple bond. But basically, carbon and carbon and carbon and hydrogen. They are only going to have London forces between their molecules. These four over here, the haloalkanes, so that's a hydrogen bonded to a halogen. Aldehydes, they have carbon double bond and then a hydrogen. The ketones have carbon double bond oxygen. And esters, as you know, they have the cocoa in them. I've done videos on all of these. They have dipole-dipole forces and London forces. So immediately, I hope that you can tell that the intermolecular forces in this group over here is stronger than the intermolecular forces in this group over here. And then the last two, the last two special little compounds, alcohols and carboxylic acids, they have hydrogen bonds and London forces. So they have the strongest intermolecular forces. And what I want you to add to your summary table over here is alcohols have one site for hydrogen bonding. Carboxylic acids have two sites. I'll explain that in a second. But why do we care who has stronger intermolecular forces? Remember, the stronger the intermolecular forces. So for example, if I am an alcohol or I'm a carboxylic acid, I have hydrogen bonds and London forces. I have the strongest intermolecular force. And what that means is that I need more energy to overcome the forces. So the forces are what hold the different molecules together. If they're stronger, I need more energy to overcome those forces. You never, ever say break the forces. We don't break forces, we overcome them or we weaken them. These are not bonds, they are forces. So I need more energy to overcome or weaken those forces. So I have higher melting and boiling points, lower vapor pressure, very important. So just to recap, the hydrocarbons, they are non-polar molecules, so that means they only have London forces. You don't even need to bother with this, okay? You can keep in mind that they're non-polar, which means they only have London forces, but this only London forces between the molecules, that's the important part. Alkyl halides or haloalkanes, dipole-dipole and London forces. Ketones and aldehydes, dipole-dipole and London forces. Okay, there's a ketone, there's an aldehyde, okay? Dipole-dipole and London forces. And then the strongest two, alcohols, they have an OH, and carboxylic acids, you can see here, they also have an OH. Because of this, OH, because of this, they have hydrogen bonding and London forces, the strongest type of intermolecular forces. And just to briefly show you, if this doesn't make sense to you, it's okay, you can just study it. Here I have methanol, and here I have another methanol. They have one site for hydrogen bonding. Okay, so hydrogen bonding can take place in one area between two different alcohol molecules. So one site for hydrogen bonding, whereas this diagram looks a bit messy, but carboxylic acids have two sites for hydrogen bonding. So this is one carboxylic acid molecule, and this is the second carboxylic acid molecule. There's two places where hydrogen bonding can occur. So two sites for hydrogen bonding, which means that, think about it, if alcohols have one site and carboxylic acids have two sites, carboxylic acids have more sites for hydrogen bonding, which means carboxylic acids have stronger hydrogen bonding. Keep that in mind. So essentially, carboxylic acids, they have the strongest of all the intermolecular forces out of the homologous series that we spoke about. Then alcohols, so first is carboxylic acids. They have two sites for hydrogen bonding. Then second place goes to alcohols. They also have hydrogen bonding, but they only have one site. Then after them would come all the molecules over here, which have dipole-dipole forces. So those would come third. And then in last place, alkanes, alkenes, alkynes have the weakest intermolecular forces because they only have London forces. So in the previous video, we discussed the recipe question. So this is how you would answer your very big and important questions in your exam. So how we would actually do it, let's practice. If I say I have but1-ene versus butanoic acid, which has a higher vapor pressure and why? So using the recipe question, we will say the following. Step one says state the homologous series and intermolecular forces in both. So you would say that but1-ene is an alkene and it only has London forces. You must memorize that. And butanoic acid is a carboxylic acid with hydrogen bonding. It has two sites and London forces. 
you have to tell me that the carboxylic acid also has London forces. Remember, everything has London forces. It's just that alkenes, alkanes, alkynes, they only have London forces. Step two, compare the compounds and state which one has stronger or weaker intermolecular forces. So this is where you use the argument about the fact that because butanoic acid has hydrogen bonding, hydrogen bonding is stronger than only London forces. You have to state strength and why. So in my answer, I actually said it the other way around. I said London forces in butanoic are weaker than hydrogen bonding or you could say that the intermolecular forces in hydrogen bonding are stronger than the London forces in butanoin. So either way, I'm arguing strength. You're telling me either that the one is stronger than the other or that the one is weaker than the other, so you're comparing. Then, based on strength, the one that is stronger will need more energy to overcome the intermolecular forces, and the one that is weaker will need less energy to overcome the intermolecular forces. So I said that because butanoin is weaker, it has weaker intermolecular forces, it needs less energy to overcome the intermolecular forces than butanoic acid. And because butanoin needs less energy to overcome the intermolecular forces because the intermolecular forces are weaker, the vapor pressure for butanoin will be higher. Okay, it needs less energy to go from its liquid state to its gaseous state where there's vapor. Okay, so butanoin has a higher vapor pressure and that's how you answer the question. I hope that that was helpful. In the next video, I'll be tackling chain length and how that affects physical properties.